How's it going guys? Long time no see. I'm here in the beautiful Squamish Beach Sea with my paddleboard and my floaty. <laughs> Having a little bit of section uh, cooling down. It's quite a heat wave right now. Just giving you guys a little update of what's been going on. We put the Hilux back together on its wheels. Um, so just loaded it up to the fabricator. So should be getting some more reliable SAS well done uh, while it's there. We'll have another video on that specifically, talking about the Hilux. But for now, I want to tell you guys about this interesting topic that we did in collaboration with Get Out Go and Venture to Roam on YouTube. Oh, oh God. <laughs> This time the topic is what is overlanding? I know this is a question that a lot of people have been asking and especially in recent years the term has been just widely used to describe a bunch of, you know, it could be just a way of modifying your vehicle but this is what we think overlanding is for us and why we're doing it and not that. And he asked a lot of good questions. I figured it might be a good standalone video to share it with you guys on my channel. So. Here later on I'll put in what I've answered along with all his questions and in the link below is Christoph's at Get Out Goes video. Give it a check if you want to see what all of us have been saying and um, yeah had a lot of fun answering this. I was actually filming this in the garage while we were sort of in the face of putting the Hilux together. It's been a fun journey, a lot of learning. Without further ado, let's put it on and uh, while you guys are watching it, I will be paddling around the lake here and get some sunburn on. It's not even gonna be suntan, it's just sunburn. Hope you guys have some fun and uh, I'll see you guys soon, very soon, hopefully. And hopefully I'll be back on the road soon too. Ciao. My name is Monique and I run the channel Overland Lady. On my channel, I post mostly solo remote travel with my Land Cruiser. I do have some exciting new build coming, so if you would like to follow along, feel free to give it a sub. In terms of overlanding, the definition of overlanding, I would like to trace back to Overland Journal that pinned the definition of overlanding. Please allow me to read it to you. Overlanding describes self-reliant adventure travel to remote destinations where the journey is the primary goal, typically but not exclusively accommodated by mechanized or off-highway capable transport, from bicycles to trucks where the principal form of lodging is camping, often lasting for extended lengths of time, months to years, and often spanning international boundaries. While expedition is defined as a journey with a purpose, Overlanding sees the journey as the purpose. I know over the years there's been all sorts of different use of overlanding. It can even be used as describing a style of modifying a vehicle. But if we were strictly talking about the overlanding, I always go back to this definition, which means you're overlanding when you're going on trips that discover places that have a different culture than your hometown. And usually out there for a long time. It is not overlanding where you go out to the back roads for a weekend camp. And it is not overlanding when you are modifying a vehicle that is capable of going on expeditions. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with car camping or building a vehicle. Those are all fun things that I personally like to do as well. But I just would like to dif really differentiate um, what the definitions are so that we're on the same page that so we're talking about the same thing about overlanding. So how I started it, honestly, I fell into it. A couple of years ago, when I left my corporate job uh, that didn't make me happy, I went to Australia, sort of did a young people thing where they didn't know what they want to do with their life. They um, have the opportunity to go through working holiday visa to live in another country with the opportunity of working to earn some money to support their travel. So I did that while well, traveled Australia for a whole year. 
I bought my Land Cruiser in Sydney after I landed there and sort of just fell in love. Once you're in Australia, it's pretty difficult to not get a little bit of camping in you. And once you're in the outback, the culture, the lifestyle sucked me right in and I just never wanted to stop. And it was only after coming back when COVID broke out and the idea of overlanding or car camping started to bloom in North America. That's when I realized when I look into the definition, oh, I guess that's considered overlanding. You're going to a place that obviously have a different culture than your hometown. You're living on the road, living off of a self-sufficient vehicle. And it's not about gear. At that time, I didn't have dual battery set up. I didn't have a fridge. I didn't have electrical, I didn't have a lot of things. That just goes to say it is the journey, it is the places that you've been to that matters the most. And in terms of what I started YouTube, it's not like a one day thing where I wake up and thought, I want to be a YouTuber. I've always liked creating memories and collecting memories. I've been journaling since I was nine and I still journal every day now. I have so many notebooks of them now. I started with taking photos and started posting photos online. And then once I felt photos are not enough, I started to blog with more words describing the day of the shoot or what's behind the story of the scene. So sort of I started blogging with photo and once I started going off-roading, photos don't really do the justice of how steep the hill is and the scenery we're seeing, the places we've been to. So that's where video sort of came in and I started to learn how to film a video. And at first, especially while in Australia, most of my videos was just to show my parents, show my family back in Canada. These are the things that I've been doing and I guess in a way to tell them I am living fine by myself out there. And sort of it caught on, I guess, and people love it, especially when I start to go out trips alone more and more. You have so much time on your hand and you just naturally start to film more stuff. And then with that, it's more of your thoughts that's going into the video. It's sort of what my style of video comes from. It's just me on the road, blasting out all of my random thoughts and showing the camera, which is showing my audience what I've seen as if I'm actually taking the passenger. So I'm not so lonely, you know? <laughs> so yeah, being out there, especially solo, I would say if there are some skills that you do need to gain um, to be able to, I guess, make it happen. <laughs> Um, from the very beginning, when I went to Australia, it was basically zero, except some, I guess, off-roading experience from back when I had a Jeep in Canada. But really, in terms of trip planning, navigation, um, especially recovery, very lacking, you sort of gain it with time. In Australia, the good thing is they have a lot of guidebooks that tells you certain tracks that you can go and then what's around it that you can see, some highlighted spots that you can, you can go check out. So it was sort of a soft, smooth start for me to get into finding route and planning, planning trips. And then the more remote trip I've gone on, the farther I've been, the more time I spend on road, those experiences sort of just came all together and then you sort of have a system that you know how to navigate yourself out there. Learn some of the basic four-wheel drive skills, learn some of the basic navigation skills, learn how to cook for yourself, good to go. I would say it's fairly easy, so my recommendation, my tip for anyone wanting to go out is just, you know, don't overthink it. Start with going with people that have experience. And then for the first few trips, you can always tag along and learn what they're doing. Take notes if your goal is to eventually do it solo. One easy way to get to this stage is pretend you're alone while you're on a group trip. Air down and air up your own tires. 
Set up our tent back there in the dip and cooking some dinner at 4 30. Set up your own camp, set up your own fire, cook for yourself, track your own tracking. The only difference is that you have people to talk to when you're alone. So it's, as long as you get the hot skills down, the next time when you go out alone, you're doing the same thing, except not having a living human responding to your jokes right away. That can be a little different, but I won't call it difficult. Being out there makes me feel free. I guess that's sort of the reason why after coming back from Australia, I kept doing it. Not only it makes me feel free, but most importantly, especially on those solo trips, it makes me feel capable. That I can actually take this steering wheel, both physically and literally, the steering wheel of my life, and control where I wanted to go, get to where I plan to go, or if I can't get there, I still have the option to change path and do something that's better for the day. It's almost spiritual in a way that, you know, the reason that I left corporate was because that I felt I wasn't in control of my life. I wasn't living my life. I was living off a script that others say, this should be it. Whereas being out there now, everything is on my own. I plan my own route. I execute my own trip. I faced all the difficulty and deal with the problems myself with my own hand. And I get to share the stories afterwards and hopefully encouraging more people. At first, obviously, especially going out alone, my parents were quite concerned. As a daughter, going out alone, you are putting a lot of stress on your parents, I will say that. And trying to be more responsible for people that care about you is, I guess, my tips for people that wanted to do this. I am not just, hey, bye, I'm off, I'm having fun. You can worry about whatever you want to worry, it has nothing to do with me. No, I'm not saying that. I'm still being responsible for people that care about me. This is where satellite communication comes in handy and make sure that you assure them that you have the quality and you have the skills of handling yourself out there. Just turn it on and tell the parents I'm still alive. So if they don't trust you, maybe there is something that you're sort of lacking on and you are not making them feel safe enough. I guess I am blessed with the opportunity that where my parents eventually <laughs> built up their confidence in me. Throughout this, even though most of my trips are solo, just one huge lesson I learned is the value of people. People around you, people that care about you, don't ever take it for granted. Especially when I was on a solo trip. The people that care about me and then asking me, getting my updates or even giving me suggestions of what you see around there. How's you? Is this? The real MVPs cares about you when you're not around them physically. And the people that lend you a helping hand on the road while you're in trouble or even when you're not in trouble just checking in. I am so grateful for all of those. Currently and in the past few bit of time because of COVID, we've been just stuck in BC and exploring what's around in this area. So if you ever want to come in BC, my suggestion is come in the fall. BC is so big. Try to go north, northern BC or caribou area. So like the middle BC, there's so much history originated from goat mining and the color is just so pretty in the fall. Maybe since you're here in the fall and up north, might as well just go into Yukon, go into Alaska, check out the Arctic before they get super, super cold and snowy. In terms of me, I would love to eventually go south. If you've been following my channel or about to follow my channel right now, you will see I'm building a ride and drive Hilux in Canada. So that's something rare, more of a fun project. Maybe this one won't be a good choice for long remote travel, but 
we'll take this rig wherever we can in North America. Eventually I will do a Pan America trip and maybe visit South Africa.